Hello again, students. Dr. Dia here once more. And what I want to do now is walk you through a sample set of data for experiment one or melting point. Normally what I do is I look for previous reports from former students of mine. So let's go to one of those. I'm going to show you what my student got. Let me open that for us. And there it is. So this was a uh, former student, Peter, very smart kid. Uh, was always talking about spiders for some reason. Uh, he started going out with this uh, beautiful redhead girl. We called him MJ, called her MJ. But I um, don't know what happened to him. All I remember is he was always talking about spiders. Anyway, uh, Peter did this lab a few years ago, and this is, uh, he had unknown number seven. Make sure on your data sheet that you put in where your unknown is. And in this case, his capillary B was the unknown plus strand steel bean, and capillary C was unknown plus succinamide, all right? So this is what your data sheet would look like at this point. You have the temperatures. Remember that this first set, A, B, C, represents the instrument's recordings. In other words, every time you push that uh, left or center or right button, it captures these data. And then the ones with the quotation mark or apostrophe, I can't see very well what it is. I'm sorry. Uh, those are the ones that the teammates wrote as uh, Peter was performing the experiment. Okay, the first thing we want to do is we want to calculate what is the uh, melting range here. So that basically is it's a trivial uh, calculation. It's the uh, freezing point minus the melting point. So it's 0 0.9 for this one. So you'll be filling this in. You can do it by hand or you can use the document. Don't forget to obey six fix rules, right? You have to do these to one decimal, 0 0.9, 6.3, and this one is 1.0. Notice that the values in the first set of columns and the second set of columns are close, but not always exact. And that's because there might have been some delay in whoever wrote the uh, temperatures here on the right side, or the person pushing the buttons maybe had a little delay. So they don't always have to exactly match. I wouldn't worry about that. The important thing here is how do you explain your rationale here. How do you analyze this data? Remember, the strategy is my substance by itself should be fairly pure, which means it should have a relatively, you know, let's say a relatively uh, narrow melting range, like you see there, less than a degree. That's pretty good. However, if I mix my substance with something that is not the same, I should observe a drop in the melting point and also a broadening of the, of the uh, melting range. So let's go ahead and see what we have here. I'm going to see if I can get uh, out of here. Oops, uh, I'm trying to get my, need to go back out of here. Let me make sure I got this here. Okay, so uh, let's explain our rational here. So let's compare A versus B. Notice that B has a lower melting point and a broader melting range, right? So that means, therefore, our unknown is not trans still being. That's all that Peter had to write in here. Essentially, when I mix it with trans still being, right, that was B. Remember that B and C are not the compounds. These are the mixtures. So mixture B is my unknown with trans still being. It behaves as if it were impure. Therefore, they're not the same. Now I'm going to compare A versus C. And I notice that C has a similar melting point and a narrow melting range. Therefore, our unknown and 
cinnamide are the same. All right. And because of that, I'm going to come back in here and I'm going to write down here that my, uh, no, oops, sorry, I think I have a, I think I had a, oh, I had a, the Alex box already set in here. Sorry about that. You don't have to do it this way if you don't want. But that is my unknown succinamide. And that's pretty much all that this part of the lab has to do. All right. That's all you have to do. Analyze the data you're going to receive. See if you can find out. Let's say, for the sake of illustration, let's say that my unknown had been the other compound, benzoic acid. You might have asked, why didn't we test our unknown against all three of the candidates? Well, because if you have two of them, you can eliminate the third or vice versa. Let's say that my unknown had been benzoic acid. Well, what would you like? What would be your expectation then? Right, you would have expected that mixture C would have also shown a lower melting point and a broader melting range because that means that my compound was neither transtilbene nor succinamide. By elimination, it would have been benzoic acid. Okay, so that's all we need to know. And that is how you will fill in your lab report. You don't need a big explanation here. Just make it clear, make it concise, make it so that an outside reader, an outside person can look at your data and understand what you're talking about, all right? So that's it. Remember that you're also gonna have to be doing a post-lab activity. All of that is in your Canvas course page.